finally he got to the point where he said, okay, enough is enough. You know, these people, they, they're not going to listen, so I just need to leave. Allah ordered him to stay for another 40 days. And so he continues to call them, but before the 40 days are up, he says, this is it. Allah's going to send his, his punishment, so I'm leaving. Now, when the people saw that he is leaving, or he's left rather, then they, they kind of woke up and they said, wait a minute, you know, he's really left, it means something serious. So we really need to change our ways. So anyway, so he leaves and they repent unto Allah and they come back to Allah. Now, as Yunus is on his way out, he happens to run across someone. He says, what happened to the city, right? And the man says, well, they all repented unto Allah. So now Yunus is, is frightened because Allah told him to stay for the 40 days and call him for 40 days, but he didn't. Anyhow, he gets onto a ship that was headed to a place known as Tashkent, right? That, right? Uh, Tashkent, excuse me. He gets on the ship, and sure enough, as we all know, a storm comes. Now the storm comes, the people on the ship, they, you know, they, they say, okay, we need to let go of some load, we need to cast some things over, overboard. And so Yunus salam says, cast me overboard. And they said, you, you're, you're a pious guy, you're a righteous person, we can't do that. No, we're not going to do that. He said, no, 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 do it. We will, we'll cast lots. In other words, we'll, we'll, we'll see. So anyways, they cast lots. It's a way of kind of, I don't want to say gambling, but basically a, a game of chance where you find out you know, what will be cast over or not. So sure enough, every time they did it, it would come on the turn of Yunus alayhi salam. So as it goes, Yunus alayhi salam is, you know, is basically jumps overboard and he's swallowed by a fish. Right? So this much we know. Now, what's very interesting is when you go to the Qur'an and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, what he did in the belly of the fish. Allah says, فَنَادَ فِي ذُلُمَات That he called out and the word that Allah uses is ذُلُمَات And in English you don't really have an equivalent meaning because in English you can say darkness but you can't say darkness says. But in Arabic you can have a plural of the word darkness. And I believe it was Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu anh, who said that the reason that Allah said فَنَادَ فِي ذُلُمَاتِ that He called out into the darknesses is because there were three levels of darknesses. Number one, that when He had jumped overboard, it was nighttime. Number two, that when the, the large fish took Him to the bottom of the ocean, it was the bottom of the ocean. So much so that He could hear the rocks scraping the, 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 the belly of the, of the fish. And if you know, like, for those of you who may have studied oceanography, when you go deep enough into the ocean, you can't see anything. Like, you can't even see your hand, right? It's pitch dark. So he said that's the second level, and of course the third level, the fact that he was in the belly of the fish. So he calls out, فَنَادَ فِي ذُلُمَاتِ He calls out in the darknesses. And what did he say? لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ Right? There's nothing worthy of worship except you. All praise, or all glory is due to you, and I am from amongst the wrongdoers. Okay. So why did I start this off by saying how to make your lives easy? You see, the Prophet wasallam says that there is no servant that is going through some sort of hardship except that he uses the dua or calls upon Allah with the dua of my brother, the noon, meaning Yunus alayhi salam, except that Allah will relieve his hardship. And he mentioned the dua, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al So, that's, we see that from the Prophet ﷺ, this dua, if anyone's going through hardship with, you know, whatever hardship that might be, right? Someone may be going into trouble with their children, financial hardships, uh, physical hardships, you know, problems with sickness, whatever it is. The Prophet ﷺ said that there is no servant who calls out to Allah with this dua, La ilaha illa anta, subhanaka inni kuntu min al except that Allah will relieve his hardship. Now, why? Like, why this dua? So, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah actually has a whole book, a whole tract written on why this dua, and I'm not going to get into all the details, but just to kind of summarize it very quickly. You see, first and foremost, Yunus alayhi salam starts off with Tawheed. La ilaha illa anta. There's nothing worthy of worship except you. So he purifies his, his heart for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this regard. But number two, the second phrase he uses, subhanaka. You know, typically when you see the translation, it's glory be to you. But this term, subhana, what it means is it's far removed is our you, or far removed is Allah from anything negative. In other words, like if you think about this term and how it's used with another term, like 
you'll see it's usually coupled with Alhamdulillah, right? So if you know the Prophet Sallallahu he mentions like, uh, you know, the dhikr, the adhkar of Allah, Alhamdulillah, uh, and SubhanAllah. These are two things that are coupled. Why are they coupled together? Because when you say Alhamdulillah, you have praise and you have gratefulness to Allah. It's, a, it's, it's, it's qualifying all of the positive things. SubhanAllah is negating all of the negative things. So it's like a perfection of when you say it. SubhanAllah wa bihamdi, SubhanAllah al right? It's coupled. In other words, when you make this dhikr, you're perfecting it. If you say Alhamdulillah, all good qualities, all praise is due to Allah, right? For example, at the, at the end of Surah Al-Shu'ara, when the people are being, uh, where people are going to paradise, what is on their tongue? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. But what's very interesting is that the people going to the hellfire are also saying Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Why? Because they're praising Allah for His absolute justice. Because all the deeds are then meted out on the Day of Judgment. And so seeing all of this, they cannot help but praise Allah for His perfect justice. So they say Alhamdulillah. So that's one angle, the, uh, affirming the positive. SubhanAllah is when you negate the negative, meaning that there is nothing negative that should be applied to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's come back to Yunus alayhi salam. Typically, the human reaction when something negative happens, many times, I shouldn't say typically, many times, people start to get upset and they say, Oh God, why would you do this to me? Why me? I'm a good person. I did this. I did that. I gave charity. I went to the fundraiser, whatever it might be, right? So I did. Why would you do this to me? And this is a very bad attitude. Right? Because all of us are sinful before Allah. Right? All of us. The attitude of the prophets and messengers is exactly opposite. When Yunus salam said, Subhanaka, saying, Oh Allah, there is no injustice that is applied to you. You are far removed from being unjust in any way whatsoever. So his reaction is exactly opposite of what you would have many people do. Right? So the fact that the reaction is opposite, and then finally he says that I am from amongst the wrongdoers. He's basically the blame, putting the blame upon himself and in a way making istighfar. Yeah. So we see that within this dua, the relieving of the hardship is because of what the attitude is, right? It's not just saying the dua, right? La ilaha illa anta subhanaka ni kuntum Okay, now we're waiting for the, you know, for, the, for the hardship to go away. But it has a certain deep meaning. So I just wanted to share a little bit of that with you, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of your efforts and everything that you, everyone has done for the fundraiser and for the masjid. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the, this masjid, the school, and may, you know, let's be just the starting point. And may I see many, many good things to come in Allah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayhi.